Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am, and today we are going to be making our way to the War Master's Shack. But before we do, let's go ahead and go into our map and put down a few markers. Right here's gonna be our first one. And then up here, we're gonna put our second one. And then over here, we're gonna put our third one. Right about here, we'll put four. And then right here, five. Okay, let's go ahead and hop on tour. Our first marker, we're going to be getting a silver scarab. And this is going to give us the Ash of War Sacred Blade. This is going to be very... Oh, nope, that's not what I wanted to lock on to. There we go. Get Sacred Blade. I don't know why it wanted to lock on to that dragonfly there we're gonna continue following this road grab ourselves some neutralizing boluses we're not going to take the road to the right we're actually gonna follow the path down this way Go ahead and get rid of this marker over here. We'll grab this grace. Come through here. We're going to grab a smithing stone four. We won't be able to use that for a good while, but it's good to get it now. We're going to hop on Torn again. Come over to the west. We're going to use this Spirit Spring. Then we're going to head northwest until we get to the cliff side here. Follow the cliff side down. And then just around this building, we can get ourselves a golden rune four. Just gonna keep following this along here. And we're about to meet D. D has some really awesome armor, in my opinion. He is right here. Be careful not to go too close to that graveyard. There's no mistake, is the death has left its mark once again. Ah, a tarnished, are you? I'm known as D. I hunt down those who live in death and weed their death root. Heed my warning. The village here has been touched by death. And worse yet, it is home to a mariner. If you value your life, then go no further. He has some really cool armor. I really like his armor. We'll end up getting that uh, later into the walkthrough. Again, be careful not to go into that graveyard. We're going to go around it. Come up, talk to this nomadic merchant.
Let's go ahead and talk to him. Oh, dear. You yeah, might... I... Terribly sorry. Uh, are you here as a customer? So real quick, we're going to buy a cracked pot from him and the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 3. You can buy any of these items you want in there. The only thing I will tell you is by the end of the video, you're going to want about 10,000 runes because we're going to need it to buy a bunch of Ash of Wars at the end of the video. Okay, let's go ahead and get out of here. I must apologize. I, 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 I'm afraid I've very little to offer. We're going to go to our map. I'm going to put a marker right here. And then we're going to come back this way. Put a marker right here. Then right here. Here. And then lastly, right there. Oops. Press circle too many times. We're going to head east. Be sure not to go by that graveyard again. Go ahead and touch this grace. We shouldn't have to rest at it. We got plenty of uh, health and plenty of flasks. Let's go ahead and bring out our wolves. We're going to fight this mariner that D was talking about. See if we can't get a hit on him before he disappears. Uh, nope. And he reappeared off in the distance over here. The only reason I brought my wolves out is so they can distract these guys. He can hit his own enemies that he spawns, his own allies. So he's got friendly fire, I guess, on. Let's take care of this guy. He's getting in the way. Ouch. disappeared I'm sure he reappeared over here somewhere yeah down the way here he can summon out his skeleton guys but really I would not focus on them they'll disappear as soon as you kill the boss unless they're absolutely getting in the way too much As I said that, I, like, almost died from being too greedy. There we go. And then D's going to appear over there. We'll get ourselves a death root. And we'll get the skeletal militia, or militiamen ashes. Pretty cool uh, spirit ashes. Let's talk to D real quick. Another fool who won't listen to reason, eh? But with a prowess for weed in death root. Hmm. How would you like to earn the strength of beasts? If you're inclined to hunt more of those who live in death and weed their death root, then I'll introduce you to Garank, the beast clergyman. I have a matter of my own to attend to, and the beast himself wishes for someone to take my place. What say you? Very well. Show me your map. I've marked the location for you. Of a hidden gateway. It will lead you to Garank, the beast clergyman. 
I have a matter of my own to attend to. I spotted the mark of the centipede here in the village. An ill omen symbol that should not be. Someone or something threatens the sanctity of the Golden Order and must be eradicated. Let's go ahead and come over here. We're gonna go up the stairs. There's a few uh, skeletal warriors over here. Grab ourselves some mushrooms. By the way, I've been running into a glitch. Maybe it's a glitch, maybe it's not. But when I rest at a grace after I've beaten the Mariner, um, the Warrior Jar Iron Fist Alexander seems to disappear. So I would be cautious on resting at a grace right now. Right here, we're going to pick up a smithing stone. We're going to hop on Torrent. And we're going to ride right over here to this next marker. Get rid of the marker. And then we're going to use a stone sword key on this statue. And that'll open up the fog door or fog wall, whatever you want to call it. We're about to get a talisman that we're going to put on. Pretty cool talisman, in my opinion. This is going to be the green turtle talisman. So real quick, let's go into our equipment. And right here is how you equip your talismans. You go into this slot right here. Real quick, before I put on the green turtle talisman, I want to talk a little more about the sacrificial twig. I know that I talked about it briefly in the last video, but let's say that you equip this and you die. When you die, the sacrificial twig will break and you won't lose your runes. But let's say you don't have the sacrificial twig on and you end up dying to a boss or a bunch of enemies or something happens and you're scared to make the run back because you don't know if you're going to be able to get your runes, you can always put the sacrificial twig on to grab your runes. And then that way, if you die on the way there, your runes won't disappear. They'll stay on the ground and you'll have a second chance to actually grab your runes and then depart with them. So... Just wanted to explain that a little better. Hopefully that came out okay. If not, let me know in the comments. For now, let's go ahead and put on the green turtle tal talisman. This will make sure our stamina recovers faster. That way when we're in a fight and we lose all our stamina from fighting, it'll recover faster and we can get back into the fight. Let's go ahead and get on torrent. Everybody wave bye to D. We're going to head west. Now you can run through this graveyard. If you want to fight those uh, skeletons here, feel free. I'm not going to. I'm just going to run right by them. I just didn't want them following us towards the merchant or... Um, interrupting our conversation with D. Grab the smithing stone and we have a pumpkin head over there. Or over here, one of the two. Now oh, I knew it. Ugh, that AoE, I'll tell you what. you knock yourself around too much? <laughs> I think he uh, made himself kind of brain dead there for a second. 
Again, try not to rest out of grace if you can help it. I don't know if that's a glitch or uh, something else with Alexander. But real quick, we're going to go meet the Warrior Jar Alexander Iron Fist. Or Iron, the Iron... Oh my goodness. Alexander the Iron Fist. <laughs> Good lordy. Hello? Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. Hello? Hello? Anyone? Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please, can you help me out of this? My thanks, a thousand thanks. Just give me a good smack from the rear with something nice and big. And I'll pop clean out, I'm sure. Don't dally. Uh, there's no need to fret, I'm very well trained. Give it your all, I say. Well, he wants us to go behind him and smack him with our sword. So let's get going. As wrong as that sounds, we get the Triumph and Delight emote. Let's go ahead and talk to Alexander. Ah, well played, good sir. Well played. Oh, that mighty wallop of yours almost spelled the end of me. <laughs> Ah, well, I'm out now, and that's what counts. I thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like you to have this. Once again, the pleasure is mine. I am the warrior jar known as Alexander. Iron Fist Alexander, in fact. I journey to the east, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet, rot-blighted Kalid Wilds. And upon their southern edge is Redmain Castle, in which a festival of combat is being held. I'd heard whispers of such festivities before. Doesn't the notion set your breast a flutter? <laughs> Let's go ahead and continue on. We're going to come down here and then immediately hop up top here. We do have a catacomb right there. We're not going to get it just yet. We're actually going to come up here first and loop around because we have a few items we can get. Be really careful. Got some enemies. We're going to head north. We have an iron golem over there. I think they're called iron golems. You know, they're really big. Grab ourselves the lance talisman. Pretty easy once you get him to fall on the ground. Get a ton of damage from that visceral attack. Hop back on Torrent. And we're going to head towards the catacomb now. Grab a few mushrooms. While we're heading over to the catacomb. Let's go ahead and open up the door. And then real quick, we're going to light this grace and sit at it. We're going to equip the sacred blade. Along with... Um, reallocate our flasks first. We're going to give ourselves one cerulean. 
That way we have four crimson. And then we're going to come down to the Ash of War. Go to our Lord Sworn's Quality Sword and come down to the Sacred Blade. So you don't want to put it on Sacred. You want to keep it on Standard here. That way we can maximize our damage. We're just trying to use the ability for the Ash of War. Let's go ahead and two-hand our sword. Sacred Blade will allow us to kill these skeletons outright. They won't resurrect themselves. Because if you just kill them... And I'll actually show you after we activate this summoning pool. This first guy... Right here. If we knock him to the ground he's gonna have like some glowing stuff if you let him get back up he's gonna resurrect but if you hit him one more time you can kill him now what we want to do is we want to number one not forget about this guy hold L2 to activate the sacred blade and then we can one-shot these skeletons, making them a whole lot easier. Grab some Grave Glove Wart. Sometimes you gotta hit the skeletons while they're on the ground to get them to kind of activate. Okay, so right here, this skeleton guy has glowing eyes. If they have glowing eyes, that means that they're going to give you more ruins after you kill them. So you want to kill guys with glowing eyes. So see, we got 310 ruins from uh, that skeleton. Compared to... Let's go ahead and kill another skeleton here in just a minute. So we got 310. And then right here we will get 62 so yeah definitely kill the guys with glowing eyes want to come through this archway here we have some skeletons some archers just hit them one time get them to stand up grab the uchi katana if you started out as a samurai now you have two uchi katanas you can dual wield Good stuff. Get this guy to get up, maybe. Come on. There he goes. Try not to get him to fall down. So real quick, we're going to have a ton of different skeletons um, getting up as soon as we hop down. The first one's going to be right here. Use your sacred blade. That way we can kill him. One shot. Last one right here. And then we're going to come through the archway. As soon as you get right about here, turn around. You're going to have two more skeletons running at you. But they won't activate until you get into that room, like your first step into that room. Now we can turn back around and go pull the lever after we pick up some Blood Rose. And a Grave Violet. Alright, be sure to hit X to get rid of that text down there. That evil demon hex. Ugh, man. It's the worst. I swear they're keeping it in the game like that just to troll everybody. Let's go ahead and put on our Cerulean flask, which we're going to take off immediately because we're not going to use it after this boss fight. I just wanted to make sure that I had enough FP to get through the dungeon and then enough FP to summon in our 
lone wolves. Lone wolves? Super easy boss. Not hard at all. Oh, she dodged it. And she's stuck. Boom. Done. So we get the Assassin's Crimson Dagger. This is not a weapon. This is actually a talisman. You can tell that it's a talisman by looking at that left corner of the item window. And you can tell what is what by whenever you pick up an item. There always will be a different symbol depending on what kind of item it is in that left corner. So keep that in mind for different materials. It'll like if it's crafting materials, it'll have a different um, symbol for it. And then for talismans, it'll have a different symbol as well. Get another death route here. You can uh, use the stringy light to get out of here if you want. I'm just going to backtrack. Rest at the grace and then take off the cerulean flask and switch out our sacred blade back to our storm stomp. So go to allocate flask charge and then back to our crimson. And then Ashes of War. Right here, we want the Storm Stomp. And we want to put it on quality. Real quick, before we get out of here, we want to put some markers down. We're going to have a marker here. We're going to have a marker right here. And then a marker right here. And the last one should be about there. Let's go ahead and two-hand our sword again. Keep our sword constantly two-handed. We can put our lone wolves on real quick because we're going to summon them out in just a moment. Take out that dog first. Be careful of the foot soldier. He'll sneak up on you. Sometimes, if you're not careful, take this guy out as well. And then we can summon in our wolves. Make sure that our crimson flasks are equipped. Nice. That was just good maneuvering right there. Take out the Godric Knight. Then we want to pick up the Exalted Flesh right here. We can open up this chest, grab ourselves the Beast Crest Heater Shield. And then take out that soldier. We're almost done over here. We still have to get an item up top there. But we actually have to come around to get that item. And that's why I kept it marked up there instead of in the camp itself. Just as a reminder that we have to come back around. Might as well top ourselves off. We're going to get a bunch of flasks anyways for clearing out the camp. There we go. Grab some smoldering butterflies and then we can send our wolves home. Switch back to our crimson flasks. And then we're going to come down this road until we see a path that veers off to the right. Which is right here. Be careful 
Wolves are going to drop down, but just keep running. They shouldn't follow you. If they do, I apologize in advance. Let's keep running. We're going to hop off. We're going to be invaded. It's going to be our first invader. This is not really hard, but he can kill you very easily if you're not careful. This is an NPC invader. Be careful for that attack. It does hurt. It's not hard. You can kind of spam R1 if you really want to. He's just really not that hard of a fight. We'll get some flasks back for killing him. And we get the hammer talisman. Right here for everybody that loves to PvP. Here's your PvP items. You're going to get the small red effigy. That will send your PvP sign out across all the summoning pools and then right here is going to be your duelist furled finger this you can put down your red pvp sign on the ground to duel people as well if you think that there's an area where there's a lot of people that are pvping you can always put that down there and then right here we can open up this door this is the coliseum this is where you can do 1v1s 2v 2v2s and I believe 3v3s? I'm not sure. But if you're into PvPing, this is a pretty cool spot. You just walk up to this altar. It'll let you choose uh, what kind of stuff you want to do. If you want to do 1v1s, 2v2s, or 3v3s. We can't do that because we're not playing online. Let's go ahead and hop back on Torrent. We're going to come off to the east here. Right here is an amazing spot to farm smoldering butterflies. So if you're needing smoldering butterflies, right here is the place to get them. And then over here we have a knight. We're going to take him out. get a critical on him he's gonna give us golden vow and then we also got his uh, gauntlets as well that's not a guaranteed drop and then a beast liver so over here at this structure that's all broken or the runes we're gonna kill another silver scarab this one is going to be a sombering smithing stone so we have plenty of those now always do a charged attack by the way to kill that silver scarab if you don't it's gonna fall off and then you got to chase it down there it's really not fun and then right about here where that marker is we can see the ruin down there. We want to hop off. Get off torrent. You don't want to be on torrent when you're going to grab this item. It's pretty easy to fall off there. Get the lance. Then we can hop back on torrent now. Also, if you want to kill those owls, they do have a chance to drop slumbering eggs for you, just in case you're wanting that crafting material. We hop down here. We're back at the beginning of that encampment. We're going to take the path down. But we're not going to go too far off to the right because there's a bunch of wolves. We're going to come over here to this grace. And this is going to be the Warmaster Shack. 
This is where I was telling everybody you're going to need about 10,000 ruins. If you don't have 10,000 ruins, go farm them up because you want to buy all of these Ash of Wars. Not seen you before. Name's Bernal. Tarnished, just like you. Let me ask you something. Are you here in the lands between to take up the fight? Does your faith in the guidance of grace hold firm, despite the collapse of the Golden Order? Yes, you're a tarnished through and through. Takes me back. But that's a quality needed now more than ever. Any interest in bearing the torch of my battle arts? All I know is the sword. Picked up a fair few tricks in my time, too. Now's the time to pass them on. To a good and proper tarnished, like you. There's a myriad of battle arts in these lands that I've yet to discover. Mementos of all the warriors who raised their arms in battle. Lost and died. A fine tale, all told of true chivalric romance. That's how I fell in love with the sword. And the arts of combat. It grants meaning even to falling in battle. To death itself. Let's go ahead and learn all of these Ash of Wars. You may not use them all, but it's always good to have extra just in case. Let's go ahead and leave. Well, until we meet again. And then I think right about here is a good spot to end the video. So I want to start with telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.